this is the time for people to be diverse, to be out, to be visible, to be here, to be queer, to be straight, to do whatever you do and to do it with love, compassion and empathy in this world. And I plan to do that and I hope to spread the message. My name is Jimbo and I'm from Victoria, BC. Wow, it's like I boarded the mothership headed straight for outer space. I'm here to compete and win the first season of Canada's Drag Race. Another crown? I couldn't, but okay. As a costume maker, I'm very skilled in materializing beautiful looks and garments. I do a different makeup every time, so it takes me a little longer than those of us that do the same face every day. The most interesting thing about me is, is that I am a chameleon. I can de reach deep inside my imagination and dig out alternate versions of myself to express and relate to the world. As a straight, gay, oh wait, straight, gay, no, I'm not straight. I, <laughs> whoops, okay. I identify as a gay man who loves to do drag and perform as a clown. Sometimes I'm a beautiful woman, sometimes I'm a hideous creature, sometimes I am a genderless ghost, Casper. Um, so yeah, the, to me, uh, drag is an extension of my clown. You know, there's a lot of blurring of the lines between drag and clown and drag kings and queens. And you know, drag doesn't always have to be feminine. It doesn't always have to be um, like, when you represent in drag, it doesn't have to be a, a girl or a drag queen, per se. It's, it's just a performance artist, in my case, or a clown. I knew I was gay for sure when I fell in love for the first time. And so once I had that connection to someone who happened to be a man, I knew I was gay. My brother actually is gay as well, and so he came out and um, my dad was very controlling and um, very fearful of us being gay. Our whole lives really tried his best to squash, gain us out. If he got a sense that something we liked was gay, a shirt, or an outfit, or a costume, it was always burnt in the fire. So when I fell in love and I moved out west to be with my partner at the time, Hank, um, and there was just no question in my mind about my love or my life or my choices. I was able to go back to my family um, and say I am in love with a man and his name is Hank and he's amazing and he loves me and there is no question. That just is. And yeah, I just really wanted to wait until I could um, be in love and celebrate that love and be sure in my spirit and myself um, when I came out. And so I did. I've always gravitated towards beautiful, sparkly things. And, you know, my mom, the first time uh, she put my makeup on, I looked in the mirror, I was about five, and I just said, wow, mommy, I look so beautiful. And so she just laughed. And ever since then, I kind of would grab my brother and we would hide in the basement and we'd do our makeup and click clack around in the shoes and um, my dad hated it hated it hated it and so you know that became a very bad thing that we did in secrecy and eventually you know we stopped doing that as we played and got older later I started to when I moved out west here to Victoria I started performing with a vaudeville troupe Atomic Vaudeville and uh, trained as a clown and the clown is my gateway to understanding uh, the relationship between the performer and the art, uh, the audience. And clowning is about immediacy, it's about truth, and it's about self-expression in that moment without uh, filters. You just sort of are a conduit for joy. And then I naturally over time started to weave in my feminine self um, and sparkly things. I started sort of as an ugly clown. My first clown turn was of my evil ex-stepmother, um, whose name was Karen, who was literally evil. From there, I sort of um, started to evolve and work on my makeup skills, and I sort of allowed myself to be beautiful. I stopped sort of hiding behind this 
I don't really want to dress like a woman or I don't want to, you know, be too effeminate. And watching Drag Race for the first time, season two, I saw this group of artists and people that were doing the same things that I was doing, like carving these pads. And it all started to click to me that there was this greater uh, community of performers and artists that I shared something with. And so I just, yeah, basically allowed myself to be beautiful and to grow and to get into it. And my tits have grown and my beauty has grown. And I think my self-confidence and my confidence in <clears throat> my story and what I want to say to the world through my art and through my voice is also growing. So yeah, it's incredible. I never actually came out to my dad. I um, moved out west when I was about 25 to escape him and his abuse and uh, manipulation and, and basically mind control that he, he had been doing for years and years and years. And so I escaped and I distanced myself. Um, it was a, you know, a very horrible situation, but he basically turned into a demon, came through the phone, told me that he would destroy me and then uh, we never really spoke again. So by the time I came out, I didn't feel like I wanted to share that with him. I thought this is such an important part of myself and you haven't earned the right to know that much about me anymore. And so um, I never came out to him and I, you know, on his deathbed, he alluded to knowing the fact that I had a friend and saying that he was so happy and so proud and um, I never got into it with them. I just said, thank you so much. And um, I just thought at that point it was too late. And then my mom is lovely. I love her so much. And she at first was like, whoa, hon, you're really letting your freak flag fr fly. And I was like, yeah, mama, just you wait. And slowly, you know, she started to see a bit of herself in me, which I think she thought was so funny with the breasts. My mom has big breasts and she always had long nails and she always, you know, had her hair done and there was lots of makeup and perfume and rings and diamonds and nice dresses and her high heeled shoes. And I think she was so excited for me to uh, have escaped that um, mental repression and to be safe out west and to feel comfortable enough to explore myself and to share that and she loves my beauty and she loves my sense of humor and she is my number one biggest fan aside from my beautiful partner Brady um, but she supports and loves unconditionally always and she's always told me to celebrate myself and celebrate my failures as well as my successes and so she's my biggest cheerleader and totally amazing feeling as though I had misrepresented myself to my community and my friends and my loved ones um, and I think you know they knew what the ha was happening for me a lot of people knew um, that my dad was very abusive controlling and fearful of us being gay and that it wasn't really safe for us to be gay um i have not no i haven't had challenges i the west coast victoria especially is very open there's a lot of uh you know it's sort of an island of weirdos so a lot of people gather here who are very open-minded very receptive and i've been very fortunate to have a beautiful community a lot of beautiful friends a lot of people that uh, support me and know my path and my story and don't want to make it harder for me at this point and I also don't I, you know I, I try to cultivate positivity joy and love and so you know that tends to come back to me and especially when it's something to do with my sexuality or my art or my expression of myself or my personal truth um, people celebrate that no one's trying to challenge that or take that away from me everyone's saying yes feel yourself live your life be amazing share the love uh, so I've had a very amazing um, opportunity to to be out and to be loved and be celebrated. I am happy with everything that's happened and it's all my journey and all my story and I don't think I would change anything so far. Find whatever makes you happy and to explore that and share that. And um, drag has evolved over many, 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 many years to be all encompassing. You can be a drag king, you can be a drag queen, you can be non binary, you can just be you in makeup, doing whatever the hell you want to do. Be truthful so that what 
when you're sharing something, um, you can stand behind what you're saying and that you know where that message comes from, whatever it is. You know, if, if you're just freaky, if you're so beautiful, or if you want to be so masculine, or you want to be hyper feminine, you know, it's all drag is just about celebration of self and bringing those things to the surface and sharing those things. So I think as long as you're operating from a place of truth from within yourself, where you can extract the most joy out of your expression that um, the rest will fall into place. And of course, community, 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 friendships, um, people that have been doing drag or have, um, you know, connections to drag or ideas about, you know, where to get supplies or how to do different things, techniques, there's lots of things online. But if you're like myself and uh, like real time human stuff, then it's amazing to have a community that you can sort of lean on and say, hey, I've got these ideas about these things I'd love to achieve or um, things I'd love to make. And, you know, sometimes you're not able to do everything on your own. And so I've really benefited from a lot of beautiful, loving friends and community that have helped um, me achieve all of my goals and my fantasies. Be truthful to yourself and do what you need to do for yourself and coming out is about aligning your personal truth with the outside world and uh, you need to do that when you are comfortable and feeling safe and feeling supported to be 100% yourself. I would always choose to be gay. Gay people have the best time. They are so much fun, so creative. They have so much love and energy to share. Not that straight people don't, but I am gay. I like being gay. I am glad I'm gay and I started as gay and I'll die gay. Yahoo. The fact that I feel free and safe enough to be 100% myself. And, um, you know, I feel so proud that the community around me and the country I live in is open and progressive enough to accept that we are all humans, that we all love and need love. And it doesn't matter whether you're gay or straight or non-binary or all of those things, that we are all human and we are all here um, trying to make the best of having a life on earth. And so why make it hurt for someone else? Why not um, you know, make it easier on yourself and everyone? So that's maybe what I feel most proud about. Winning this crown would mean the world to me. And I would know that Mama Roo was so proud of her beautiful little daughter, Chimbo.